industry by bringing in global technologies to Indian industry as well as nurtured the Indian talent to develop products for the world. Products developed under leadership of Pramod for recent vehicle launches from VW India, Tata Mahindra, Stellantis India, Renault Nissan India are primary examples made in India and made for the world products. I am very glad to welcome Mr. Pramod for this evening to deliver expert lecture on wireless sensor networks in vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure. Over to you, sir. A very warm welcome to you, sir. So please, uh, you can start your presentation. So it's a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Shobha. Thanks, Nagamani, for the uh, anyway, uh, very warm welcome and introduction. Happy to be here. Um, I'll just share my screen. Um, let me know once it is visible. Sure. Yes, sir. The presentation mode is fine. Uh, you can just go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, good good evening, everyone. Uh, glad to be here, and uh, it's a privilege and honor to be invited for this IEEE webinar um, uh, among many distinguished scholars and academic academicians. Uh, so, um, I think it's a very interesting topic: uh, wireless sensor networks in V2V and V2I. Something that is very, uh, in a way, um, uh, uh, encouraging as well as that such advanced topics are being discussed in, in IEEE forums, particularly in, in uh, India and in Bangalore. So I'll start my uh, presentation with a brief uh, introduction of uh, WSNs and then the industry view of WSNs itself. And then I'll get into the specifics of automotive. Um, so uh, I'll keep the first part brief. Um, as you know, uh, there are various sensors uh, which gets networked and then connected to a gateway. Um, and that gateway kind of gets connected to a cloud, mainly focusing on data sharing. Uh, and that gets uh, seen by uh, on a mobile or any other end user device. And uh, in automotive case, it's majoritively a cockpit display. Um, and this is where Visteon plays a major role uh, along with some other ECUs like uh, uh, battery managing system. I'll briefly touch upon those specific use cases at a later point of time. And um, um, basically, the main aspect of this such as sensor networking is to gather information, uh, particularly on data like uh, light, temperature, sound, pressure, and then do some data processing in the cloud and then take actions uh, um, either to predict or to bring in some sort of a, a corrective action. So now, um, these, uh, um, in terms of WS and networking architecture, we have one is layered architecture, the one is clustered architecture. This is uh, uh, a multi-hop uh, network, whereas uh, multi-layered network, whereas this is only a two-layered network. Uh, and uh, here, many uh, hundreds of sensors, nodes gets connected and uh, uh, and then get communicate with each other. Um, whereas here it, it's kind of clustered, um, uh, um, the node sensors itself gets clustered and then gets connected to a base station uh, and then they communicate. So that's why you see a two layer here. Here it's a multi layer. And this is mainly uh, again uh, based on leech uh, uh, technology, which is like uh, low energy uh, uh, networking. So that's the main uh, perspective of. Uh, uh, networking here and in terms of each sensor node itself um, as you all would, would be aware it mainly mainly as a power unit which drives the power for this standalone unit and uh, all of them more or less would have one sensing unit um, a sensors uh, it could be a CMOS sensor um, uh, and then one processing unit with a built-in memory or an external memory um, wherein it, it mainly uh, processes the data 
and then uses a communication unit uh, basically a transceiver to communicate to an external uh, device depending on what the functionality is we may or may not have a position tracking uh, uh, as part of this sensor node also a mobility unit so these two are optional but rest of the things more or less would uh, are integral part of any sensor node and most of these sensor nodes are stationary um, and also they need to have more or less con continuous connectivity to a, a anyway another like, may do some uh, power optimization and those kind of things but i think the co connectivity part would be constant and then they also are built for multi hop uh, kind of uh, environment and they are built for m to m right one sensor node communicating to another sensor node or a base station like machine to machine communication and mainly built to communicate gather data and then communicate the data so um, and then uh, more or less they are mainly uh, battery powered and uh, in, within themselves they have very less computation because most of the computation either happens uh, uh, in the cloud or in, at the base station but they themselves have very less computation power these are the typical characteristics um, and then um, uh, various uh, wsn technologies uh, uh, that are more or less exist in the market are zigbee bluetooth wi-fi wave wireless heart um, elo pan and the uh, wave ends. out of this i think the first three are majority uh, are majorly um, uh, accepted in the market wireless heart is mainly the industrial control application that's where it gets used and they are mainly uh, mainly di differ themselves either in the frequency band they operate uh, or, or they support and then the throughput rate right depending on whether they are for a short uh, range or a long range and then uh, for a, a critical application or not and then the cost driven so these are the various parameters each one has its own advantage and disadvantage uh, but i think uh, for majority of the short wave or short range uh, communication zigbee and bluetooth uh, and to some extent wi-fi uh, uh, now because uh, uh, the complex design that existed in wi-fi is now coming down so that's why wi-fi is also gaining uh, more popularity and we are also seeing a low wi power wi-fi related devices with better uh, um, <coughs> power management so that way um, these three are more or less popular and wireless art is in um, specifically uh, in industrial application is gaining uh, popularity so and uh, this table gives a comparison in terms of coverage and and throughput uh, uh, i'll specifically come to automotive specific how some of this gets deployed but on a generic level these and many more exist uh, and also wireless sensor market itself um, currently in 2020 it was valued approximately around 46 to 47 billion dollars and this is supposed to be projected to close to 124 billion dollars uh, with an annual growth rate of uh, um, uh, 16 17.64 percentage currently the largest market is north america but asia pacific is the fastest growing market particularly driven by Australia, um, Australia, these countries are uh, driving this change. Uh, Singapore um, uh, catching up in wireless sensor networks. And what is driving these uh, this growth, um, particularly, is uh, the smart city um, um, initiatives that majority of the governments are taking up. Uh, uh um autonomous vehicle related projects or the investment that are coming up from automotive companies and the other key aspect is also uh in a, uh, uh, 
making the uh, end end use cases that could be possible with IG Uh, Pramod, sir, we are not able to hear you. Uh, hello, ma'am. I think uh, his uh, network is not uh, proper. Can you just uh, call him and tell him to switch off his video and just... Uh, like to... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now you are audible, sir. Sir, okay, I think sorry. you can put off your video and uh, for the benefit of uh, the clarity. Oh, okay. Because your audio is getting crumbled. Yeah, yeah I will do the that. One second. So we are not able to hear you still. And Nagamani, ma'am, can you just call and talk to him? Uh, hello, ma'am. I just called. He said that he will change the network. Okay, okay, fine. We'll just wait for him to get back. Okay, sir. Okay, ma'am. Hello, Ramod sir, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. You can hear you. Am I audible up, now? Yeah, the slide is up. I think you can start, sir. Yes, sir, you are okay, audible. Sir. Okay. Not sure. Uh, sorry for the 
disturbance. So, uh, when, when, where shall I start now? Is this? Yeah, slide this is the slide where back? you got disconnected. Uh, so, you can just start from the slide which is being projected. Okay. Okay. Okay, sure. Okay. Yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, the network uh, currently is valued in 2020 at $44 million, $46 billion. Million dollars, and is expected to grow in six years to around $8 America, but is uh, Asia Pacific is catching up really fast, mainly driven by Singapore, China, India, um, and uh, Malaysia and Korea, Japan, these countries. And what is driving this change is all the governments now are heavily investing in building smart cities, as well as the automotive industry is, is uh, heavily in investing in autonomous vehicles as well as the electric and electrical vehicle infrastructure. So, um, and that is driving some of these WSN investments. And, advancement in, uh, and the key aspect of this is uh, um, 5G itself is coming up with various releases versions, including uh, 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 direct communication between two devices, uh, addressing all the shortcomings earlier that 5G had, and that is adding many more use cases uh, um, uh, to this uh, uh, end application that's possible now by mission. And, and the rolling out is also happening very fast um, across the globe. Uh, and that is now helping uh, in a way to, because that helps more from a data perspective and data sharing perspective. And, and the other key aspect that has now catched up is uh, caught up with everything is the artificial intelligence in analytics based uh, uh, prediction uh, and where data be, has become a um, key aspect. And since uh, these WSNs are helping for gathering data. There is high interest coming from industries, putting sensors at wherever it is required and gathering this data so that we can uh, bring in the uh, required uh, prediction as well as the action uh, uh, based on the data collection. And uh, uh, again, everything has to be driven by market pool. Uh, and what we see is now there are a lot of beneficial end user beneficial use cases that are driven uh, which is uh, include, including healthcare or uh, industrial applications uh, which, which is uh, uh, in a way driving some of these uh, wsn growth um, uh, and and again um, the um, particularly the intelligent sensors right uh, that is also adding to the overall growth of wireless sensors. And the key players in these sectors are like ABC Siemens, which are more or less playing the uh, OEM role here. And then the TIA, uh, uh, NXP, Renaissance, and some, some of these chip makers are, are making the required technology changes. Uh, and and uh, um, again, uh, main industry, these are military and environmental, industrial and health uh, urban system. Uh, um, these things are driving the, the overall growth of the market. So while the census more or less uh, Hello, sir. We are not able to hear you. For example, any urban indoor related things might have uh, medium uh, throughput and medium robustness. 
So these various aspects also depend, decide the sensors nodes and the sensor technology that, that in a way, um, what kind of uh, kind of combinations uh, and what uh, technology, what node, what sensor uh, gets chosen accordingly. Um, now, within coming to automotive and vehicle to vehicle communication, um, in 2020 we were almost like 500 million, a 0.5 billion dollar, and it grew to around uh, 600 uh, billion dollar, approximately around 20 percent growth. But now this is uh, projected to grow to 2.3 billion uh, with the 38 uh, percent CAGR uh, in in uh, uh, almost like four years, and, and uh, COVID slowdown happened, and the other thing also is industry started mainly prioritizing investments. That's why, to some extent, ADAS, uh, driverless car, as well as V2X, uh, particularly in that V2X, went a little bit into the back burner. But now with 5G and autonomous vehicle also catching up uh, post-COVID, we definitely see this V2X growing. Um, uh, at least to $2.25 billion in Europe. Uh, in within APAC, Singapore, China uh, are, are the leading countries, and Japan. And in uh, Europe, uh, uh, the Scandinavian countries. Uh, Pramod, sir, you are not audible. Hello. Hello, Pramod sir. He has some network issue, it seems. He will reshare it since, ma'am. Just two minutes. Uh, please ask him to log in through two devices, no? Because I think at least the phone he can use, and uh, if he can share the presentation, we can share it from our end. Sure, ma'am, sure. He can talk over phone. Uh, yes, sir. So if you're having challenges in network, you can just uh, share your slides. I can share it here and you can talk over the phone uh, for the audio. OK. Yeah, uh, if that works. Out let, for you. Yeah, let, let's try it because it's a little bigger uh, slide. So sharing now might take a little longer. So uh, we'll we'll try to uh, see. OK, if this okay. works. Yeah, sure. OK. Yeah, um, so it, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, the key drivers in this area are uh, NXP and Renaissance, which are the uh, 
uh, semiconductor companies bosch delphi continental vistian are promoting mainly the v2x uh, 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 devices as well as the display units and among oems like gm4 bmw and volkswagen are, are more or less uh, leading uh, these uh, uh, v2x and uh, different from uh, uh, any other domain uh, in terms of wsns are one is in, in automotive world as we know the um, uh, uh, vehicle acts as more or less mobile node right while the sensor itself acts as stationary so that's why um, um, it becomes more or less uh, 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 hopping of networks or whatever is done by the vehicle so it it becomes extremely important that uh, um, any whether either it's 5G or LTE or DSRC any of the networking technologies the uh, vehicle connects seamlessly to all these uh, base stations and the communication is smooth uh, even handing over from during network change crossing of borders because those are the typical uh, um, uh, use cases where it becomes extremely difficult for us to maintain a seamless connection. So um, that's why that becomes one key aspect. The other thing is also power, right? So because uh, this is battery driven and power is key, uh, particularly whether it's electric vehicles or uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, even uh, petrol or diesel vehicles, gasoline vehicles, the power becomes key, uh, particularly in, in our case, the sleep current of this measure, measure that we do. Uh, it, it shouldn't cross like four milliamps, and those are the uh, specific uh, requirement that we'll have from OEMs. So all this sensor that way has to be uh, extremely uh, power sensitive uh, units. And then the processing itself, right? E even though um, yeah, the uh, a majority of the processing exists uh, uh, in a way in the cloud and other uh, uh, stations. We do expect these to do a little bit of processing so that we don't rely totally on the uh, global processing. And there is some intelligence exists within these uh, sensor nodes that processing power could be on the uh, higher side. And also that, that, that way reducing the load on the communication channel. Uh, and then the other key aspect also is right uh, the DSRC, cv 2 x Zigbee, and long range, LoRa more or less. These four are the dominant main technologies that are uh, uh, that are uh, involved in communication, and uh, that's how we see majority of this gets employed. So uh, and and in terms of ruggedness, right, uh, whether it's the temperature, oper operability, or uh, uh, humidity, all that, uh, um, and sometimes now we even get uh, IP51 kind of requirement where uh, it has to be uh, waterproof uh, so that uh, when whenever any uh, um, uh, or, or high temperature like a, uh, 120 degrees, 85 ambient temperature. So those kind of requirement also come up uh, depending on uh, some of these hot regions uh, uh, and they have to uh, even work on minus 40 degrees Celsius. So that's why it becomes very key that uh, these are highly rugged and unfunctional. Um, and some of these are safety critical, uh, um, uh, safety critical uh, sensors. So that's why it be, uh, safety and security, particularly the cyber security aspect also becomes very key. As I mentioned, the four Key technologies are long range Zigbee, DSRC, and CV2X. Uh, these are more or less get used. Uh, uh, Zigbee gets used within the car. Uh, I can give you one specific specific example, or, or within the parking lot and um, uh, 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 areas. Uh, DSRC and CV2X more or less becomes uh, vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure communication. Uh, uh, longer. So, uh, and now um, the uh, 5G V2X, particularly what we call a REL 16, um, is getting gaining lot of uh, momentum in the market, generating interest, generating lot of interest within the side linking. That means 
uh, earlier what was just possible with the base station and and uh, device now uh, enables device to device communication uh, and this was particularly important because uh, when when the network is not available and uh, uh, or when the uh, network is because in all regions we will not have 100% seamless network connectivity uh, we can rely on uh, the vehicle to vehicle uh, uh, communication or device to device communication uh, fulfilling some of the um, critical uh, uh, autonomous driving as well as semi autonomous driving related uh, use cases so this is where i think majority of the interest is also coming in the oems and what is happening is even from a chipset standpoint this uh, uh, v2x as well as the 5g it becomes available in a single integrated chipset and that helps more from a device uh, 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 making of those telematics units or connectivity units what we call also uh, easier for tier ones like us uh, uh, and that's where now we are getting many requests from uh, oems to uh, towards having these integrated uh, um, solutions to be made. Um, in, in particularly in India, this was on a little slower side, but from this year onward, there are a lot of uh, quotation, requests for quotations or proposals we are getting, where uh, uh, both CV2X and 5G integrated solutions are being requested. Uh, as you all know, automotive more or less is a three year, two to three years development life cycle and with a lifetime of such a device around seven to 10 years. So um, what I expect then is this, such a technology coming to market in 2024 and 2025, at least in India, and uh, then um, gaining momentum as we go uh, towards the later half of uh, 20, 27, 28. Uh, so, that's when we see a more traction or uh, more vehicles with these features uh, running in Indian cars. So current visibility is introduction of this in 2024 and 2025, uh, uh, CV2X in Indian vehicles. Uh, again, uh, uh, more or less architects, uh, uh, again, vehicle to vehicle uh, is all there or vehicle base station is also there. So in some cases, it could be hybrid, uh, ad hoc hybrid related uh, um, communication as well. So um, what are the specific uh, challenges uh, in WSN uh, related to automotive is RF channels, right? Like the particular the powertrain the, uh, where which have uh, high metal parts. Um, so what happens is uh, uh, um, uh, there's high absorption of RF, uh, 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 to uh, more or less uh, 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 communication dealing with multipath propagation and also has to come uh, overcome a lot of non offside scenarios. Um, so this becomes one key challenge for WSN design makers in an automotive world. And also we see um, because in nowadays there are many mobile phones and uh, infotainment also has many Wi-Fi, Bluetooth connections. There is a lot of, again, RF interference keeps happening within these devices. At any point of time, we see around five to six mobile phones getting connected within the car. Uh, and then uh, uh, infotainment itself ha is having like uh, two Bluetooth or uh, one Wi-Fi uh, related connections, which, which, which is causing a lot of interference and managing this interference. Uh, and uh, keeping out the noise, but uh, making sure there is no impact on the throughput is also one key challenge. And uh, the other key thing is uh, in, in scenarios like uh, parking uh, lot, right? The vehicles are placed next to each other. That's why there is a lot of signals being caught from those vehicles as well. Uh, and this happens particularly if in, in a driveway or uh, in parking lot, a drive theater, so where uh, are any of these uh, 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 events like Olympics and uh, are such kind of uh, high uh, events, uh, we see these challenges coming in. And uh, the other aspect, as I mentioned earlier, also consistency and robustness of data communication. 
uh, this is very key, uh, uh, particularly looking at the criticality of uh, some of this data in, in autonomous driving and safety uh, critical uh, applications. And I already spoke about minimizing energy consumption. And the other key aspect also is functional safety. That's why majority of these devices has to be ISO 26262 compliant and uh, uh, cyber security or security the, uh, is another key aspect. So we, we see now majority of the Indian OEMs that way also mandating uh, cyber security in, in, in all the at least telematics devices uh, to avoid any of the intrusion coming in uh, or, or wherever the wireless connectivity exists. So, uh, and uh, again, the general automotive requirement like uh, long temperature range and uh, mechanical robustness and cost efficiency are our other key thing. Um, so, um, that's where what makes uh, WSN critical success factor in, in V2X is um, designing a WSN that can identify, configure, and join uh, a static ne network in a more automatic and reliable way. Because, uh, as you know, majority of the people, particularly who works in the field uh, in an automotive world, are mainly from mechanical background. They may not have all the electronics or the technical know-how of maintaining and uh, uh, monitoring uh, some of these uh, uh, devices. So it becomes that way extremely important that these are self-driven uh, uh, networks than uh, uh, human-dependent networks. Uh, so that we take out the human uh, angle or uh, as much as possible. And then the other key aspect is uh, they have to be synchronized and robust in terms of data communication so that the, the data reliability is, is uh, there. And uh, then otherwise, if this becomes a question mark, the usage of WSN itself becomes a question mark because this is key uh, for the success of such a uh, uh, network in, in automotive. And automatic sensor and actuator configuration, again, this is also linked to the same point, um, uh, because what happens is, again, uh, if any of this has to be done at a dealer or at a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, end user level, this or even in plant, this becomes a humongous time, because automotive is a volume-driven market, and uh, uh, if if any of this has to be done, the production time uh, for each of the vehicle or, or the unit becomes longer, impacting the cost of production, uh, where uh, uh, what we call uh, the uh, WBS in a way, right? The build time of each of the vehicle is extremely important. Um, so that's why uh, all this has to be easily done and uh, in a way more or less easily uh, configurable. And wireless sensor for extreme extreme environment is easily, easily important. Secure and tamper proof. So we give a lot of importance. That's why cyber security, whether it's secure boot or, or uh, uh, from the 5G or those kind of intrusion based. Uh, 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 and a lot of certification also has to be done uh, from a cyber security standpoint. There are independent cybersecurity uh, companies who audit all our ECUs to make sure they are tamper-proof. Proof. Um, um, and then uh, energy efficient and, uh, uh, and less uh, uh, RF emitting devices, right? So that there is a human uh, health issue as well here. And then uh, um, interoperability, right? This is key because whether you connect wired or whether you connect wireless or uh, uh, hybrid, um, the data exchange, data acquisition, data uh, 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 in a way integrity is, is all key, and they have to work between them seamlessly. Um, it, like uh, whether it's one brand or one maker or one protocol uh, or one technology, uh, but they all have to work together, uh, and that that is also key for the success. So these are the typical automotive uh, um, core applications driven by uh, um, driver assistance system, fleet and asset management system, intelligent traffic system, parking management system, uh, emergency vehicle notification, uh, line of sight or non-line of sight, passenger information system. This is where we uh, play a major role. And then uh, uh, 
mainly backed by government consortiums, those kind of uh, uh, activities. So I, I've also mentioned the specific areas, for example, uh, in an automated driver assistance system, uh, what is beyond line of sight on a curve vehicle presence or a fog and those kind of uh, weather condition detection or in a fleet management system, asset tracking, right, asset location, all that becomes critical. And in traffic systems, uh, changing of, uh, 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 in a way, uh, traffic's based on congestion and rerouting of traffic based on congestion, prediction, all that becomes critical. Uh, parking management system, like uh, free uh, and uh, occupied parking, how do we predict uh, uh, which day, which time uh, parking becomes full and uh, parking space uh, planning in, in uh, urban areas, all that becomes critical uh, are, are, are some of the areas here. So there are many such applications uh, and uh, that are now coming up, which are driving this market. But what is still a challenge, as I mentioned, is security. Because to bring in cyber security in, in any of these devices, it takes a lot of effort. And it has to be across layers, whether it's at the boot layer or at the communication layer, whether it's BT or Wi-Fi, or at the uh, HMI level, uh, interface level, uh, and then cloud connectivity level. So, And then going for certification, all this is a very cumbersome process. So um, that, that still, in a way, uh, hinders us from uh, bringing this uh, uh, seamlessly across cars or vehicles. And then, uh, as you know, automotive is a volume driven and cost competitive. Like unless we get uh, bring this only in one or two vehicles may not justify. Uh, it has to be uh, a widely accepted and then uh, uh, extremely cost uh, competitive uh, product. And they should see the value. So that's where uh, it, it, it is still not uh, taken in, in, in all uh, vehicles and is only a premium segment feature if you have to say it like that, right? And other key aspect, which I mentioned also earlier, is installation and upgradation costs. So particularly the maintenance, the configuration, all that is also yeah, yeah, important. And there's no standardization, uh, right? So it's still evolving as a spec, which I also mentioned here, evolving as a check technology. So governments are still discussing and more or less uh, seeing what should be the, um, uh, in a way, is it CV2X or DSRC, those, those discussions from a mandate standpoint still going on. So that's where majority of the OEMs are still in a waiting game and not taking it across so that they want to see how this whole thing evolves and then they can take decision accordingly. And uh, yeah, uh, 5G readiness, again, it's, 5G is not ready across the globe. Uh, so that's where particularly uh, since majority of the OEMs look at uh, manufacturing one location and exporting it across, um, so uh, unless it's a premium segment specific to um, specific Europe market or US market uh, or China and these countries, this is still not uh, um, uh, taken for all export market uh, business as well. So coming to Vistion itself, uh, we are a $2.5 billion company with 10,000 employees with 14 manufacturing sites and 18 technical centers. And uh, uh, specifically where we play a role in uh, um, uh, V2X is uh, in the cockpit domain electronics level, uh, we do uh, display all this information to the user uh, and also to the backend uh, apps or uh, OEM infrastructure so that they take certain actions. And in some cases, like battery management system, for which I'll have a slide later, or in ADAS, we may do this uh, ECU or in a way a sensor node related uh, work as well. And we become more or less the people who then display or send the data to the, uh, also uh, data collectors, if I have to say like that, right, from the sensor nodes, not just displaying the data. And these are various OEMs that we have worked or we are working or we continue to work. This is an expanding uh, business and we are there across commercial vehicle, two-wheeler or uh, passenger vehicles as well. Uh, this is one key um, such uh, uh, product where um, um, uh, WSN is used. 
for example, each of this battery is connected by a wireless node, uh, which then uh, communicates with the battery, uh, uh, communicates to a network manager unit. Again, via it, this is the gateway in a way, right? This is the sensor node. So they then get like uh, temperature or uh, all the parameters of this battery cells, each of these battery cells, what we call wireless cell monitoring unit. And then they communicate the related data to the uh, wireless network manager, which has, uh, which then uh, 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 aggregates all this data and then uh, communicates to battery controller unit. And this may, in a way takes action so that whatever needs to be done, right, uh, either to uh, lower the voltage or lower the current uh, or charging, uh, whether to be charged or discharged or uh, control the, um, uh, in a way, uh, speed of charging and speed of discharging. All that decision is taken the care by battery controller unit. And this typically brings in all the advantages of wireless, right? Now you no longer need those cables connecting all these cells and then to the all these units, reducing the weight, which is key in a um, electric vehicle. And also maintenance that comes with all these cables, right? The, the lesser the cables, you don't have to worry about loose connections and uh, uh, the cable related maintenance and cost. And the other thing is also this scale scalable, like this is more generic solution. You, you can have two battery, four battery, six, and keep on adding, and you configure this whole thing accordingly. So it's a scalable and reusable. So these components can also be taken from one vehicle to another vehicle and redeploy. So this is one key example where uh, uh, this entire WSN gets used. And here within the car, and this in a way connects to the cloud, and then accordingly the other aspect, uh, this, could, this could be a 5G device or a DSRC device which then communicates to the cloud and does the actions as well. So this is how one key aspect that we work on where such a use case gets uh, um, uh, in a way. And the other thing is, as I mentioned, that as and the related uh, um, whole uh, information that comes with it, particularly this telltales more or less, or these chimes which gets played, communicate all the uh, um, uh, sensor data. Yeah, these are the slides that I had. Uh, uh, any specific questions or uh, I would be happy to address. Any questions from the audience? You can unmute, you, unmute yourself and you can ask the questions. Ah, sir, uh, the questions that are written here are, what is the effect of mobility of vehicles in wireless sensor network in terms of connectivity? Sir, shall I repeat the question again? Yeah, in terms of, I heard only in terms of, sorry. Uh, connectivity, in terms of connectivity. Uh, what is the effect of mobility of vehicles in wireless sensor network in terms of connectivity? Yeah, so the, if, when I say effect of mobility of vehicles, I understand is, I, I, I think I some extent answered that in, in my other chat, where particularly the vehicles keep moving, right? So. Uh, that's where uh, the seamless move, uh, connection of the vehicle itself to the external infrastructure is key, right? Uh, from a uh, uh, data transmission and data connectivity standpoint. So that if that is not there and uh, then the data is not continuous, uh, we may miss the critical aspect of uh, some of this, which is also is, is the main challenge that uh, we are in a way facing in India as well, right? There is no 4G network across or um, 5G is still coming up. So whenever we try to bring in any of these features, the main uh, uh, um, uh, challenge we face is the seamless network connectivity, particularly with multiple uh, network service providers. They themselves are not um, working or with this, even when we move from one state to another, when we cross the border, we see seamless. So there are some of these challenges, which is which are the key aspect that we have to address uh, to make this a more robust uh, communication system. So that, that's one of the key aspect. 
Uh, sir, I have one question, sir. Uh, sir, how to address this uh, uh, battery of the uh, cars, sir? Uh, actually, uh, it will, will not last long for uh, more than, uh, let's say, uh, 100 uh, kilometer or something like that. So nowadays, uh, I think some of the batteries are even better, like uh, it's capable of giving some 200 to 50 kilometers that they're claiming. But uh, uh, is that uh, that we can improve on the mileage or something like that? Yeah, so that, that is a specific to battery question, but what such a system which I'm, uh, I've already showed, uh, right, helps is we can bring in the um, uh, intelligence and check right how the charging and discharging is happening and how do we make it a little bit smooth so that the battery life remains longer and we don't uh, and we take actions effectively uh, which in a way impacts the overall battery life if it is charging too fast or charging too slow charges discharges fully so those kind of uh, uh, whatever that causes the battery health to deteriorate faster, we can monitor and control those things automatically. Um, so that is one key aspect uh, that should take the battery life, which normally they say is seven years uh, now, uh, at least as a warranty or as an average, uh, and make it little longer because this is the costliest, if I have to say, element of a car in, in an EV electric vehicle. And the other aspect is to uh, improve the coverage of a, a fully charged battery itself. I think their uh, very advanced uh, um, research is already happening and some of these range are now in terms of 400 to 500 kilometers. And even in India, you get uh, cars like Nexon EV or some of that which has a much longer uh, uh, range uh, in terms of uh, uh, chargeability. But the only thing is they are little uh, on a higher cost side and they're also now uh, um, uh, some uh, uh, um, cost driven innovation is going on to improve the uh, in a way, affordability of the these battery systems and there are business models also being worked out whether they can be leased out rather than paying it one time so that uh, or uh, the uh, battery is leased for seven years and is paid uh, and not they pay the entire battery amount. So those kind of innovative business models also being worked out. But at least uh, globally, there are much better uh, uh, long range uh, supporting batteries are available. It's just that they need to be make it more cost competitive. Uh, that's the, uh, that's where the work is going on. Sir, one more question, sir. What are the cyber security challenges that you see in this system? So one of the uh, participant is asking. Yeah. yeah. So for example, uh, we have a, um, we connect to cloud, right? So anything that is exposed to cloud, um, uh, either 5G or 4G, um, uh, is not secure. So uh, e even you see a lot of uh, hacking and uh, uh, in a way intrusion being done. So it it is extremely important that uh, this. Uh, so the intrusion come from cloud side also into the device and uh, some of the things that they can do right uh, they can uh, one is the personal information like uh, of the person or the vehicle itself can be hacked and we saw in some come, um, cases like bmw cars the car uh, somebody took control of the car itself right because these are like uh, uh, one such use case, for example, in V2X is the automatic dry, uh, braking, right? If the vehicle ahead is getting, uh, um, uh, is uh, in a way applying the brake, it communicates to the vehicle behind that it is uh, stopping suddenly and uh, and these uh, vehicles without user interference would also brake. So that means all these are automatic features. Then uh, uh, a third party who can intrude into the vehicle take control of this uh, steering wheel or vehicle itself and then uh, can um, uh, cause harmful incidents, right? So that's where it, it's extremely important that and that impacts the brand, uh, right? So if, if because it becomes a social media uh, driven uh, uh, 
uh, uh, things. So uh, and uh, in fact, the OEM brand. That's why every OEM these days is extremely uh, uh, conscious of the cybersecurity aspect. And the other aspect also is it could be as simple as downloading uh, because all these software ECUs are upgradable. So they can hack into the vehicle network or any of these uh, wireless network and download uh, uh, any uh, malware or uh, corrupted software. So all that can also happen. So that's why we have various levels of cybersecurity built in uh, right from uh, uh, boot up. Uh, it identifies the signatures uh, of the uh, binaries that are present. And if the signature is not matching, it, it won't boot at all. So and it, it, it go ask for a, a visit to the um, nearby service station. So these kind of integrity checks are done at all levels uh, so, and, and there are enough uh, mechanism built in uh, to prevent these cybersecurity attacks. Any other question from the participants? You can unmute yourself and you can ask the question. And other key aspect is whenever there's a system, that's why when you ship externally, we disable all the debug interfaces like JTAG or uh, serial port and also that there is no external connectivity possible for the debug ports. So, and whichever is user centric features, they only get exposed and they are also certified for uh, um, intrusion and all the uh, checks and balances are taken. Sir, one more question. For vehicle to infrastructure, which would be better, either cloud or edge computing for handling latency? Yes, yeah, so, so the latency is correct. So that's where uh, um, majority of the things now go by uh, uh, direct communication, right? Because the latency, particularly in 5G from a connectivity standpoint, is not fully addressed. So um, uh, that's why, particularly in a safety critical element, we still maintain some sort of intelligence. Uh, that's why what we call as high performing performance computing, right? Uh, each of these uh, uh, cards will have some high performance computer within themselves to take care of all the uh, initial level of uh, intelligence and controlling so that we don't have to go to cloud every time. And within that, um, I think edge computing particularly is much better because that brings in uh, uh, local uh, or nearby intelligence as well. Uh, so that's how we perceive it. Uh, I, I think uh, that's all the questions uh, that were seen in the chat box, sir. Thank you very much, sir for accepting our invitation and uh, for being a speaker of today's uh, discussion. Thank you from our uh, IEEE Bangalore uh, section, Bangalore IEEE Ascensor Council. Thank you, ma'am, for joining. Uh, thank you all the participants. Can Sir, can you please switch on your uh, uh, video once so that we can take a pic? Yes. Yeah. And, and apologies. <laughs> it's as they say it's a murphy's law so yeah only during the session i don't know yeah for the network connection thank you sir for the wonderful session and sharing your insights with the participants so we'd like to take this opportunity to thank even the participants for joining us today so it was a wonderful session and i hope all of you got some insights into the technology which is used when vehicle to vehicle communication. Thanks a lot, Pramod sir. Thanks. Yeah, thank, you, Pramod, thank you, Shubham. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you all the participants. Thank you, Shubham. Yeah. Have a good day. Good day, ma'am. Good day. Good day.